The defense up now, as Robin said, after gripping testimony on Friday from the two moms at the heart of this case. The mothers of George Zimmerman and Trayvon Martin both took the stand on Friday. And ABC's Matt Gutman has the story. This morning, George Zimmerman's second-degree murder trial is in his own lawyer's hands. His team tells ABC News that while the prosecution spent nine days arguing Zimmerman shot Martin because he wanted to, the defense will argue he shot him because he had to. My client acted in necessary self-defense. Focusing on forensics, barraging the six female jurors with images of Zimmerman's bloody hand and face. Zimmerman's lead attorney, Mark O'Mara, told me one of his primary concerns is the possibility of the jury acquitting Zimmerman on second-degree murder but convicting him on lesser charges. I'm really hopeful that the jury will understand that self-defense is self-defense to every crime possible. And they do not look at this and say, well, maybe we'll compromise when this is not a situation where anyone should compromise. On Friday, the defense opened its case. And whose voice was that? My son, George. In much the same way as the prosecution closed its case with a mother hearing her son's voice in these howls. And who do you recognize that to be, ma'am? Trayvon Benjamin Martin. The prosecution called 38 witnesses. Many seem to bolster Zimmerman's defense, including the last witness, the medical examiner. Only one person knows. In this Objection, room. Your Honor. The... Um, the, the witness is not being responsive. Could Nobody you, knows what the trial did could, after could, he was excuse shot. Excuse me, Dr. Bass. Yes. You need to wait until a question is finished being asked. Testimony at times chaotic and scattered. He admitted to losing evidence and changing his opinion about how long Martin may have lived after being shot. For Good Morning America, Matt Gutman, ABC News, Sanford, Florida. Okay, let's get more now from ABC News Chief Legal Anchor Dan Abrams and Judge Janine Pirro from the Fox News Channel. Also have a new book out, Clever Fox, out this morning. Looking forward to reading that. Let's begin, Dan, with uh, the prosecution finished their case yeah. uh, on, on Friday and not terribly convincing. No, look, they, they did an okay job with tough evidence and an even tougher legal standard. Uh, the, the big mistake, I think, that the prosecution made was trying to introduce George Zimmerman's various statements to police to show inconsistencies. The inconsistencies were relatively minor. And now, George Zimmerman doesn't have to take the stand because they've now shown all of George Zimmerman's statements. And when you have these inconsistencies being relatively insignificant, if you're Mark O'Mara, the defense attorney, you say to yourself, why would I call him? Why would I risk it at this point? I think that's the, 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 the only real tactical mistake that the prosecutors made. you agree with that? Yeah, I do agree with that. And there is no benefit that Zimmerman can gain from taking the stand. He will simply be cross-examined regarding confrontational issues in his past. And there's nothing that he can say that hasn't already been put into evidence by the prosecution. The worst, I thought, was the interview with Sean Hannity, where the prosecution basically humanizes Zimmerman. And then he comes out at the end and he says, it was God's will that I shoot him. Are you kidding? I'm a mother. I'm sitting on this jury and I have my own son. And you're telling me that it was God's will that my son who's going for Skittles and, and iced tea should be shot dead? You know, sometimes, Dan, we've seen it before. Uh, defendants just want to get up there and tell their story, but a lawyer won't let it. Not in this case. Uh, you know, in some cases, certainly, let's say O.J. Simpson, right, really wanted to tell his story. In this case, George Zimmerman wants to save his hide. And if he does, he is going to accept Mark Mara's advice to him, which will be very strong and very firm and very unequivocal, which is you do not want to take the stand. You will not take the stand. And as a result, I don't think that there's a real chance that he's going to do it. you cannot take yeah, the yeah, stand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and as Dan yeah. pointed out, Janine, the standard here, very tough for prosecutors. Well, it's beyond a reasonable doubt. There ha every person on that jury has to be unanimous in their belief that uh, uh, Zimmerman was entitled not only to defend themselves, but the prosecution has to prove that he wasn't reasonable in his defense of himself. Zimmerman has already established that he was in fear of bo great bodily harm. It's evidence through all of the prosecution witnesses. Clearly, Trayvon was on top. And whatever you think of this case, the prosecution is held to an incredibly high burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt to the satisfaction of every one of those quickly on all the charges. Yeah. And, yes. Yeah, and it's even harder in self. We always talk about proof beyond a reasonable doubt. It's even harder yes. in self-defense cases because you have to disprove self-defense. The prosecution. Yes. Yes. And, that, and that's what makes this case so okay, tough. Guys, thanks very much. A lot more to come on this.